Welcome, everybody. This is the program for this week's uh, this week's meeting of the Rotary E Club of Silicon Valley. We're excited, as always, to share wonderfully cool ideas with Rotarians and guests and anyone around the world who's kind of in that space of how can we make this world a better place and do it innovatively. So you've made your way through all of our different uh, our our different videos and you've seen uh, you've seen some ideas that way. You've read some different things, and just before we get started, you saw a video that tells the story of the solar buff. This week we're going to be talking with the designer of the solar buff. Her name is Alice Chun. And Alice is the co-founder of and CEO of Solite Design. She is the inventor of the solar buff uh, and a professor of design and material culture at uh, Parsons the New School for Design. After many years of research in integrating solar circuit panels with, uh, with thin film substrates, she developed the first prototype for the solar inflatable light in 2009. And when the Haiti earthquake happened, she turned her studio at Columbia University into an innovation studio for the developing solutions to help Haiti. And then the application of the solar inflatable light became the solar puff. Her book entitled Ground Rules in Humanitarian Design, published with Wiley Press in 2015, is about design principles for the long-term sustainability. Please welcome Alice Chun. Hello. All you. Hi. Um... I'm Alice Minsu Chun, and I would like to start my PowerPoint presentation. Do I share that now? So I'd like to start by talking about our company, Solite. It, so it makes beautifully designed and sustainable home lighting solutions for the global consumer. And I'd like to just say that um, the global consumer is something that's very important to us because we believe that our product can transcend different cultures, different uh, programs, as well as um, different regions of economies. So when we refer to global consumer, we believe our product, Solar Puff, can appeal to everyone from first world countries to third world countries in, um, in its beauty, design, and functionality. So when we first started um, and we did our research in terms of global um, climate change, we realized that one quarter of humanity lives without a power grid. And here you can see that the nighttime satellite view of the world showing all of the regions, the regions that are not able to, to light their world at night, um, most of these regions are in sub-Saharan Africa, India, and China. So when we're doing the research for um, what led to the solar puff, we realized that um, there are $38 billion spent on kerosene fuel. And one quarter of humanity relies on this fossil fuel to light their world at night. The other thing that we realized is that 60% of the GDP is energy consumption. And that when my son was born, um, he was born with asthma. And one of the reasons why I started to research solar energy was because um, of his ailments when he was a baby. And I would go to the doctor's office and realize there were so many kids next to me with the same issue. Um, and I went to a conference where I was able to, to listen to Majora Carter and she was saying how one out of four children in New York have asthma, which is 70% higher than the rest of the country. And I did my research again and 75% of the pollution in the air comes from buildings, not from cars. And so energy consumption is this monster, in effect, that 
um, is basically creating huge amounts of carbon to be emitted into the air, which eventually causes um, this change in our ecosystem, in human health, and um, affects us all. So globally, when we started to, to look at um, the issues with current solutions for lighting, we realized that um, kerosene is a dirty fuel, but also it's bulky and heavy for transportation. We also realized that other types of solar lights are made out of toxic materials, such as polycarbonate, which cannot be recycled. They also don't integrate design, which we think is an absolutely critical factor in long-term sustainability, that things like beauty and awe and wonder are absolutely essential for healthy environments as well as long-term sustainability. And so our solution is the Solar Puff, which is the world's first inflatable and flat pack solar lantern. It is designed with origami principles and intended to help developing regions that have no access to electricity and relying on kerosene fuel. So in the end, our mission is to eradicate the use of kerosene lanterns within the next 20 to 30 years. So our patent pending solar puff is basically engineered with high performance fabric it has four patents that have been filed total, two in the U.S. and two design patents, one in China and Japan. It's aesthetically designed lightweight at only 2.6 ounces. It's engineered for low cost. It's hygienic and it's waterproof. By hygienic, I mean that it inflates by just a simple pull motion and it goes from a flat polygon into a beautiful illuminated cube. The applications are endless. We've already implemented and sent solar puffs to Nepal. We were one of the first to bring it to um, disaster victims in Nepal just a few weeks after the first earthquake happened. And our volunteer was actually there when the second earthquake happened, and she was able to distribute solar puffs at that time. Um, and we are also working in Haiti right now. Um, our most recent mission was to bring solar puffs to a very small island with no power grid in Haiti. So. The other part of our mission is to create awareness and education in first world applications as well. That by selling to the camping and outdoor industry as well as the home decor industry, we're able to sustain our business model but also educate the public on what's happening with our product and why um, our product is so important in terms of global ecological remediation. Our competitive advantages are that it's low cost, it's lighter than all the other products out there, it's hygienic in that we, we you don't need to use your mouth to inflate, um, which is very important in disaster relief situations because of the risk of germs being passed such as cholera or Ebola. And it's also made of recyclable materials. Where I'm also a material specialist where I have researched all over the world um, sustainable natural materials as well as um, materials that can be recycled. And our sailcloth fabric, which is the light diffuser, is recyclable. It's PET. 
And eventually we'd like to um, use bioplastic for that material uh, in the future. So the solar puff is poised to change the tra trajectory of poverty, crime, education, green energy, and much more. It just needs to be unleashed. And with your help and collaboration and a collective effort, we can change all of these things um, with a simple thing such as the solar puff. Thank you. Rushton, I'm sorry. I was just really... <laughs> No, 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 no. This, this is great. This is great. Right, go ahead and stop sharing the screen for the moment. Otherwise, we have multiple uh, uh, images of me, which is probably a questionable move. Right. Um, but uh, when, when we're looking at, at, the, at the solar puff and, and beginning to think about kind of possibilities about what, uh, what this can mean for, uh, for people in a lot of places, even before Nepal, you were doing a project where uh, where someone who is responding to your Kickstarter campaign uh, can can like buy one and give one to a school. Is that right? Oh yes, we've been working with a orphanage in Haiti, Reveal Matane Orphanage Foundation, RMOF dot org, and it's a small orphanage that lost their home and school um, in 2010 when the earthquake happened and, actually, and they still haven't gotten it back yet and so um, our idea for, for them is that we are we raised solar puffs for that school, their new school that they are raising money to build but also the excess of solar puffs we want to give to the orphanage so that they can create a small micro economy in their village by selling um, at a small cost to the villagers the solar puff, they can also make an income for the orphanage. So that's that's the other project that that we had started our Kickstarter off with until the Nepal earthquake happened, and we immediately included Nepal in our efforts. Very very cool. Um, now. I'm going to I want to have you talk to us a little bit more about how Kickstarter works, how you decided to use it. But before I do, uh, I want to introduce like everybody who is watching this to one of the members of the Silicon uh, the E-Club of Silicon Valley. And that's Catherine Liu, you know. And so uh, Catherine is one of our charter members and uh, after after we get a chance to hear a little bit about your Kickstarter, she may have a question uh, that that she tosses in. But Alice, go ahead and tell us about the Kickstarter connection to what you're doing, what the response was, this kind of thing. Well, at, at first when we did Kickstarter, we did so much research on different platforms for crowdfunding and we realized that the community for Kickstarter was immense and also very community driven um, with many, many supporters that are um, ecologically conscious and, and um, so we, we decided on Kickstarter versus Indiegogo or other Platforms and when we first started, our goal was um, twenty-five thousand, and we figured that would be enough for us to do the first run of our new product, the, the Helix, which is a twist and pop um, inflatable, as opposed to um, the Solar Puff. It's made out of another material that's less expensive. But um, after the third day, we surpassed our our goal, and we kept going. And by the 15th day, we had surpassed at 900%. And um, now, at the end of 30 days, we, were, we raised $446,000, which <laughs> was far, far well beyond any, any goal that we had imagined. And it was incredible how immense um, the the public was drawn to our project and and you know we actually when after it ended there were still people emailing us saying they wanted to donate or they wanted to get some more solar puffs but we are you know we do have a website solite-design.com and we're we're continuing our efforts in Nepal as well as um, for the orphanage there 
and we're updating um, to include the Helix uh, in, in our purchases. But Kickstarter community was amazing and, and um, it, was, it was really a dream come true because it, it really does allow us the freedom to um, actually go to Nepal and deliver the solar puffs um, with people that, that we trust and know. As you know, that there, there's a lot of um, stuff that's happening in Nepal where emergency supplies are being stuck at the airport through customs and can't get through. And, and what we've done is we've um, collaborated with third wave volunteers that um, just go in on the ground and have already distributed some because um, they, they just brought the solar puffs in through their luggage. Um, so we're continuing all of the things that um, we started with Kickstarter and it's, it's amazing how people um, are so supportive and so have been so wonderful um, and I'm so great. We are, Stacy and I, my partner Stacy, Kelly, we've been incredibly grateful and humbled by the whole experience and we're just honored to, to be part of this community and we're honored to be here with you, Rushton and, and Catherine and, and the Rotary because of um, your interest and your support of what we're doing and it's just amazing that, that we're here as well. So thank you. Well, it, it really speaks to the power of, of viral media. Um, the, the reason that we're talking to you is that I have uh, supported uh, like a Kickstarter project in the past. So I get a weekly email that says, it says projects we love, right? And so it just kind of tells about several of the projects that may have launched in the last week. Mm -hmm. and, and I saw this, this picture of this cube lit up and I thought, solar puff. You know, and and went and took a look and thought, wow, that's fantastic. That, that we that's something I have to support. You mean I can send one to an orphanage in Haiti? Wow, you know. And so, so it's very much in that space of what what connects with people, right? So the the idea is that the message is something that people feel something about. Um, while I kind of talking on and on about that, I also want to make sure that uh, Catherine jumps in as well. Catherine, do you have a, a question for Alice? Yes, yeah, Alan, so you mentioned you are a material expert, so you probably have done several iterations and different experience for the materials. Yeah. Can you give us your uh, description of the journal you have gone through and why this material is a better material for the yeah. first class? Actually, that's a really, really great question because a lot of materials, even though they're allowed to be used in the United States, they're actually very, very toxic materials, things like PVC. And so some other lanterns out there are made, solar lanterns are made out of PVC polyvinyl chloride, which is an incredibly dangerous and toxic material for the environment and also hazardous to humans. Um, and uh, we really did not want to use PVC, even though it is a cheaper material. It's very, very um, readily available and it's a lot cheaper but um, it will never degrade in a landfill and um, it emits toxins after it's produced as well as during production. Um, we didn't want to use polycarbonate which is also a very hard material to recycle and at the end of the lifespan again it cannot be recycled or if you try to recycle it it gives off incredible toxins. So we decided on PET and which is recyclable, which is the same material as water bottles, pretty much. And um, it is a, a kind of sailcloth fabric that's produced in Connecticut, and the circuit is produced in China. Um, we're using LEDs, which is very, very efficient in terms of its energy um, consumption, or the way that it can last for, for years and years is incredible as well as um, the lithium uh, polymer batteries um, is very much it's safer for hazmats because it won't leak acid um, it's very reliable as a, as a rechargeable battery um, but the other new product the Helix 
is made out of TPU, which is a thermoplastic, and it's uh, an eco-friendly version of PVC, and it's non-toxic, and it's also recyclable. Very cool. Now, now when I when I think about um, you know having having sustainable materials, especially uh, when when you talk about what happens in a lot of uh, developing country environments, because it, it it's just hard for them to to handle a lot of materials that that might you know, that might be brought in. But you know, what do you do with the thin? You know, you read stories about places in Africa where uh, you know computer pla you know parts have been dumped yeah. and things like that, and you, you, mm -hmm. you, know, you got got to avoid that, right? Um, now I, I'm I'm intrigued on, on the the developing uh, the world front about what you mentioned briefly with uh, third wave. So you said there's an organization that you've partnered with. Can you tell us a little bit about them and what their connection was to Nepal and why why they were going there? Um, there's a woman on our advisory board, and her name is Allison Thompson, and she started this third this the third wave. And she's a first responder, volunteer, and she's actually gotten accolades um, throughout the world for her heroism and, and volunteer work in disaster relief and emergency response situations. And she has a whole huge following of volunteers that when a disaster strikes, they will um, organize and um, congregate and um, actually deploy to those areas to help in times of emergency. Um, and so that's what happened with Nepal. Uh, she um, organized and um, got a volunteer, Mallory, uh, Mallory Brown, I think it is. She was the actual girl that went to Nepal with the solar puffs and were, was able to distribute um, and she was there. She, she actually almost got killed um, when the second earthquake happened. She was in front of a building and, and that collapsed, but she, she's fine. And she actually sent us footage of the distribution of the solar puffs as well as amazing uh, photographs. Um, but this, this um, our partnering was really due to Allison Thompson, who um, wrote a book called The Third Wave and, and started this um, volunteer collective. Very nice. Let, let's, let's plan on having, um, if you'll get me the, the link to Third Wave and, and maybe to uh, Ms. Thompson's book as well. Uh, sure. maybe, maybe that's something that we can add there so people, after they have watched this, you know, they'll be able to follow up on that. Absolutely. Catherine, do you have uh, another question for Alice? She might have pulled back. Yes, yes. Yeah, let me unmute myself. <laughs> yeah. Um, what makes you thinking of doing this from the very beginning? Mm -hmm. um, well, I, you know, there's this process of innovation is really, um, it's never linear. And uh, there's, in Greek, in Greek there are two, um, there are two Grecian uh, gods, Kiaros and Kronos. Kronos is, and these are two emblems of time. And Kronos is an old figure who's very consistent and predictable um, mentor of time. There's also a young version of time, and his name is Kiaros. And Kiaros has wings on his feet and flitters and flies about and is unpredictable. And these two lines of time um, exist, and sometimes those two lines of time um, intersect. And those are the moments of opportunity and invention. And so, although it's not linear, um, there are points in my life that basically influence um, trajectories of time that, that eventually led to the solar puff. The first one was the birth of my son and realizing that he had asthma and the research that went into it was realizing that the air, the pollution in the air was really causing changes in our, um, in our children, health. The other was the earthquake that happened. Um, the first incident actually propelled me to start to research solar energy and I started to um, experiment with 
combining solar panels with fabric, with light materials, basically because in, in the uh, production and the, the future of materials, the materials are getting lighter, stronger, faster, smarter, and so that's what began my experimentation with solar panels and, and thin materials, thin substrates. Um, and we were working on a much larger project that was going to be um, harnessing solar energy for, for um, building skin. But during the making of that prototype, we made smaller um, prototypes to test. And then eventually, that technology was used in the Haiti studio when the Haiti earthquake happened. And I shared all of my research and, and um, experimentations with solar panels and, and thin film substrates and, and light. And that's when the first small prototype of an inflatable solar light really occurred. And then eventually I, I changed the design so that it was more efficient and more hygienic and easier to use. So that's basically what happened. Wonderful. When, when we look at what we're doing as a Rotary Club, uh, it, as, we, as we formed, one of the things that, that was the question for us is what, what will be a focus for us? Rotary has a lot of different... Uh, areas of focus as as a as a large service organization, 1.2 something million of us around the world and 34,000 clubs, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There, there's there's so much that Rotary has done, and so you you form a club of say 25 or six or seven of us, and we think, okay, well, what what's our focus going to be? And and our focus is innovation, entrepreneurship, and education. And I think you have touched on all three of those in spades in this uh, in this oh, presentation. So, thank you. yeah, yeah. Thank That's you for your great. work. Yeah. So, so with that, um, I want to I want to thank Catherine for joining in, and also thank Alice for for presenting to us. We'll have some links below, and for all of you who are watching uh, this this program as a part of the the weekly meeting of the Rotary E Club of Silicon Valley. We hope several things. We hope that. Uh, you will leave a, a comment at the bottom. At the very bottom of this page, there's a place for you to join the Discuss uh, system and tell what you think and what, what kind of thoughts do you have about what you've heard Alice talking about or anything else in our meeting. Uh, we also hope that you will let us know you attended via the I Attended survey. Uh, if you are a visiting Rotarian, uh, it's important to do that because that generates the email that you can turn around to your club secretary in order to do a makeup of a miss at your own club. And uh, finally, we hope we will see you again next week because our goal is to have programs that are this wildly cool every week. Uh, so, so please do come back and join us. And with that, we will all wish you well going into the rest of your week. And hopefully you will support what's happening uh, with So Light Design and, and equally cool efforts around the globe. Thank you.